Hello guys, welcome back to my channel once again. It's your boy Style and White. Always tell you. And today I am here with an other episode, which is episode 10 of my journey to Europe. Uh, as I stopped at episode 9, where we were in the ghetto and how I stayed there in that ghetto, ghetto until I secured a job for myself. Well, as I explained, and I was there in that ghetto for almost one month plus. Then I met this guy I told you in episode 9 and he told me to come to his restaurant to make some try out to see whether I can cook. So that was how I was lucky to be a cook in that place. And it's a local restaurant, I can say it's a local restaurant where migrants pass by, come and bought uh, Libyans come and buy food from me. So this was how I was doing. I used to sell rice, I used to sell uh, this spaghetti, I used to sell uh, uh, eggs, boiled eggs, fried egg and other stuff as you always know. Then I used to season chicken too for people. Who, who love to buy chicken and most Libyans always come and buy chicken from me because of the way I prepare it in a local way. So this is how the things goes and I was there in Libya and uh, as you always know you are always in danger when you are in a place which is not secured. Everyone has law in his or her own hands they can do anything to you as i told you whenever i go and buy bread i will meet some obstacles there so but to all that i have keep fit and i have keep being strong to conquer everything so this is how i was there and i was lucky to have that restaurant and thanks to the guy who was first selling in that restaurant because he is the reason why i know the owner of the restaurant he is the reason why I was this lucky and he is also in Italy now. I don't know whether in Italy or Spain now because for a long time we don't hear each other. Thanks to him and he is a Gambian from Basse as well. He is the reason why I know that one. So this was how I was lucky. I was there working, encountering problems with Italy, uh, Libyans. So one day the time I started selling in that place, the time I started selling in that place, oh, it was terrible because there was one kid, one Libyan kid who always come when I'm seasoning or when I'm frying my chicken, he will come and open where I'm seasoning my chicken and take chicken and run away or break one wing or one leg and run away. I cannot do anything. I just sit down and cry because you cannot touch anyone in a place where there is no security, where there is no law at that time. So that was the painful thing. And I would call my boss and tell him, you see, this thing is happening to me. So I'm afraid if something is going to happen. He said, no, when they do it, leave them because they all, we all know that we are all migrants in that country. So to touch somebody it will be something else so that kid always disturbed me every evening that kid when he's passing he must do that i will follow the kid but i can't do anything because if i do anything maybe he call his father <laughs> i'm in a trouble so that was how it is i bear everything i was there with the guy and thanks to the guy he hold me as his younger brother and i was selling there so this was how I was there whenever any of my brothers who are from my country and who are from my village pass by and they, I know that I notice that they are in this place, I must go and read to them and have chat with them, greet them and most of them come to my restaurant. They always come to the restaurant and buy things. So this was how I started my job, restaurant job in Libya. So many Senegalese, Malians, Gambians and Chadians most of them come to my restaurant and eat and most of them especially my brothers in Senegal the Senegalese guys they always take a plate, a basin every day their basin is there that you know the amount is already fixed 
which you know they always buy because they are welder men they have a weldery shop there so they always come for their lunch in that place because of the way i cook my food because i know how to cook rice and i'm good in it not by pressing myself but i'm good in it so i have to give a thanks to my mom for teaching me cooking so this was how it is i used to be selling a lot of things in the restaurant and it comes to a time when i go and buy a carton of a chicken i will buy two chicken for myself two then i will sell the the carton first I finish every day. A day I can sell two cuttings. Then I will put roast my own too and put it there to sell it. At the, those ones I will keep it for myself and the other one is for the owner. So this is how I do it. I start keeping money and the owner trusted me so so much that everything I'm doing is open. So he knows that I'm not going to cheat him. He knows that I'm going to do everything in the right way because I always do it right way as he always expected so this is how it was so one day i was sitting there there come this uh, libyan guys with cones in the restaurant i can tell you this that was the day i was very much afraid they just placed their guns on the table started to threaten me like do you do you know these guns do you in your country do people travel with guns like this Ah, I don't have any option. I don't have any other option. I say, of course, guns are not in us. We are not afraid anymore. So I just do myself as I am not afraid. So I say, these guns, we know them. We always, people move with them round and round and round because they don't know my country. They don't know nothing about my country. So I just pretend to do all that just to fake them. I say, well, I know this very well. I was having one of these. <laughs> just to make the wives i don't have any of those they will just come and eat buy chicken from you some of them are good they will come and buy and they pay some of them will come and eat until they finish when their stomach is full they will start to tell you that ah this is not good i'm not going to pay and they will not pay they will go so that was the other thing we encountered there in that restaurant sometimes i will get losses so much losses that because i will not know who is good who is bad when they just come i will sell to them and some of them will not pay some of them will pay so this was how it was in that restaurant i started in that restaurant at the beginning i start fighting with the owner of the restaurant uh, the building that ran the building to the to the to my boss i start fighting with that guy because at the beginning i don't know how things were because his shop was just behind my restaurant but when i'm swinging sweeping around the area of my restaurant he will t uh, she will tell me to come and sweep that other place i should sweep all that place i was doing that because i was not having the feet that time i was so so afraid but it came to a time i see that i think and realize i said this woman is always making me to sweep here well she have his own shopkeeper who should do all that then there i start to get hurt i said i'm not going to the following day he told me that the following week sorry he told me to come and sweep that place i said i'm not going to sweep it because that place is not mine because you rent this place to the uh, to my boss this is his area and this area is where i should sweep and stop then that was how I was free from that lady. And he started to say, I'm very stubborn. She will report me to my boss. My boss told me, I said, my, I told my boss, I cannot do it. If this will make me leave your shop, then I'm going. But I cannot be sweeping your shop and sweeping there his shop for free. I cannot do that. So this was how I was free from the lady. If not, I will be doing all those jobs. Because I was alone in that restaurant. I cook. I uh, wash plates, I season chicken, huh? and I make breakfast, I make lunch, I go to the shop, do shopping, come back, prepare everything before time of lunch, people will start to come. I used to do all this by myself, no help, with no help.
that time at the beginning with no help i am singly handling all these stuff all these chores by myself in that restaurant at uh, by then so but i know i came to hustle i have to do everything to make money so this was how i start making money this was how i start working there like crazy both day and night sometimes a day i will cook twice lunch you see after cooking twice a day and people will be just coming to buy food and some will even meet everything is finished i will just prepare egg and all that stuff for them to eat this was how i was there in that restaurant before my boss will bring his wife and uh, younger brothers to come Libya. That was that will be around uh, when Tobaski is Tobaski was approaching. No, not Tobaski. When Korite prayers was approaching, fasting was finishing. Because in that month I used to fast and doing all the chores by myself. So this was how I was there before these people will come. Before one of my brother was there before he will come. Because a lot of Senegalese people used to buy food from me. And those people, they have their workshops. And they used to buy a lot from me. Because that area, I was only the one, I was only the person who has restaurant around that area. Because other restaurants are inside. But most people used to come to my restaurant. It was not that much big. But thank God that I met a lot. I, there was where I got all my fare from that place Tripoli and I have I just read Tripoli I just work a little bit then to make a little bit money and add it on top of the one I worked in uh, in, uh, in Gadron to go and pay for my boat to go to Italy so this was how it was there things were hard but unfortunately I have made it and uh, this was how Things started coming up for me and I'm going to tell you in episode um, uh, episode 11 how I start working with some of my boss brothers and one of my brother who also came and meet me there so I'm going to tell you everything in episode 11 and much more other things in episode 11 what happened to me in Katron because I have stayed in Katron for almost eight months eight good months I am in Katron working thank you very much see you in episode 11